everyone. Today we're going to go ahead and do a classic vortex marble. I love these because they're so pretty and they're pretty easy to make. So what I'm going to start with is I'm just I rounded out the the edge of the rod and I'm just taking this is a real dark blue and I'm going to go ahead and make a couple lines down. So I'm placing these lines. I'm going to be a little bit random. Um, I like that they're not really uniform. I like that it's not exactly perfect because to me it just seems to look a little bit better. So this color that I'm using is it's a darker blue but it's uh, a sparkly blue so I really like it. Um, those ones usually come out really good in the marbles. And moving on to, this is just a real dark, um, I think this is a cobalt. And I'm just going to lay some lines down in between the ones that I already have. So after I finish this one, I'm going to go ahead and move on to a different color. Um, it's a, a really nice blue. It's unfortunately one of the more expensive blues, um, but it has little specks in it. It's called um, Blue Blizzard. It's by Tag, and I absolutely love it for marbles, especially the Vortex marbles. That I'm sure you saw in the beginning. It has those pretty little specks that almost looks like stars, so it's a really good uh, background for either these marbles or even pendants and different things like that. Now there's a million different ways that you can do a vortex. Um, as long as you have the basic shape, you could use almost anything. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and melt this in as we go here. But I've also used things like frit. Um, just roll it in frit and then do it that way as well. It gives it a little bit of a different look, um, but it really looks cool. What I'm doing here is just doing a quick hot seal um, with the punty just to the end of that rod and I'm going to start twisting it. So you want to start on the fatter piece, so we're going to start on the bigger rod and then work your way down to the punty. Now if you can see here, I'm turning the bigger rod and I'm just very lightly holding on to the punty and that's going to give just enough force to go ahead and nicely um, do the twist. If you twist it with more force, um, it gives you kind of a different effect. Um, you'll see this in some vortex marbles where the, the vortex part, the lines that are swirling, seem to kind of come out into the middle of the marble. So it really just kind of depends on what kind of effect you're going for. But on this one, I'm going to do a pretty smooth vortex, so I don't want to twist it too hard. Once it's twisted, I'm just going to take it off here and make a nice little termination. Um, you want to make sure that it's um, not floppy or off to the side. You want to make sure it's off to a nice point. So once I pull that to the termination, I'm going to go ahead and start to bring this into a bit of a gather. And I'm going to start shaping it into that cone shape. I just use my L marver, but you can easily use uh, any graphite, any kind of marver that you have. So that's the shape that we're going for. You want to keep it in a cone as much as possible. So here again, I'm just shaping a little bit more. And I'm just making sure everything is nice and melted in and nice and hot. What I'm going to do now is actually fume some silver over it. And I'm going to do a pretty heavy fuming just to make sure I have a really nice color um, that's going to come through when we look at the, the vortex itself. So you can see it's a pretty good metallic uh, finish there. So now that I have that done, I'm going to take that same pretty speckly blue and I'm going to go ahead and create an edge or a ring right around where the uh, the color ends on the, the larger part of the rod. Now this is going to be the edge of basically the back of the marble. I'm just going to go through and melt this in pretty good. It doesn't have to be all the way melted but you want it um, 
on there pretty well. So now that we have that done, I'm going to use clear so you don't have to waste color. I'm going to use clear to go ahead and wrap it around the cone. And that's going to just create the bulk that we want. So it'll create some depth if you're able to look uh, past the lines within the vortex. And this just kind of builds up the back of the marbles. try your best to make sure that you don't distort um, the vortex at all, the lines, because that will show up uh, within the marble. It shows up really easy. So you also want to make sure that you don't distort the cone itself, so you don't want to push too hard um, when you're actually marbling it into the marble, because a, a wrong push can really make that look off. So now that I have that clear on, I'm just going to melt everything in. We'll give it just kind of a quick shaping. This is going to go through and just make sure that cone stays intact with the clear around it so we don't make any kind of uh, distortions on the inside. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking that same uh, speckly blue, just a new rod, and I'm going to go ahead and coil it all the way around and encase that clear that we just put on. Now with this again, as your um, going around and coiling this around. Um, even though you're going on clear, you still want to make sure that you try not to distort anything because depending on how hot that overall gather is, if you distort even the clear, sometimes it can pull the color from underneath as well. Now the speckly blue, you can probably tell it's a stiffer color, so it takes a little bit more heat um, to actually get it on there well and make sure it's a nice consistency and covers well. And again, just pulling off any extra that I have on there. I'm going to go ahead and melt this in and this is where we're going to start to shape it just a bit. in there just to kind of round it out. That's not going to be our final shape, um, but it does make it easier to keep it into that ball and make sure that the vortex inside does not uh, shift around or, or do anything like that. Um, once you have that all nicely melted in, you can see uh, if there's any spots that are too thin or maybe a spot or two that you missed that you can see the, the clear through, just go through and Put a little bit extra color, make sure everything is completely covered up. So I hit the few places that I needed to add some color. I'm just going to melt everything in really nicely now. Now that I have a, a pretty nice round shape, I'm going to go ahead and just hit it with heat, make sure everything is nice and hot, and I'm going to go ahead and start building up the clear, that'll be the lens for the marble. So what I'm doing, um, it makes it a lot easier, is I'm just going to go ahead and hit the, uh, the little elbow that changes from the rod to the gather, right at that very end as if you were making a new gather, but I'm going to put it in the marble mold and then push it down and that's going to go ahead and give um, the, the clear just a nice bulk. That's just a, a quick way to... So this is just going to be a quick way to um, kind of thicken up that glass without having to expose it to too, too much heat for too long. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and heat up just the rod at this point, and I'm going to use gravity to kind of let it droop down and just kind of stretch out the thickness of that rod. So when it comes to actually shaping the marble, you want to go through and use a smaller marble mold. You're going to use just the rim of that to start shaping it out. Now a good rule of thumb to go by, which is what I use, is you want to finish um, about 85% of your marble before you disconnect it from the rod. So when you finish that 85%, that makes sure that it's nice and easy. When you flip it over to the other side, you'll only have to finish off just a small part, which makes it real easy. So now that I have that all shaped, I'm gonna go ahead and take that same uh, blue blizzard color and I'm gonna use that as my punty since the back of the marble is the same color. So if for any reason at all that chips off or gets stuck to the back, at least it's going to be the same color and you won't really be able to see a difference. Um, and that was a cold seal. You want to make sure um, that the marble itself is warm, the tip of the punty is hot, and you just want to barely touch it to make that connection. That's going to make sure that it pops off really easy when you're done. So I'm melting in the lens here from where I disconnected it from the rod. And in this step you can start rounding it out and you'll start to see if there's uh, too much glass left. And you can go ahead and pull off anything extra that you might see there that makes it look uh, a little bit off, makes it look oblong. You want to try to make it uh, as spherical as you possibly can. So now with um, rounding that out just a little more, I can tell that the marble is just a little bit off. That clear is a little bit too thick. So I'm going to go in, round it off one more time to get a, a good shape going. And then I can see exactly what I need to pull off. So I'm going to pull off just a little bit of that clear lens just to make sure that it's going to be a nice sphere when we're done. And go ahead and hit the, the front that lens with some heat and then we'll round it out again. Now this is just that 15% uh, or so uh, of the marble that we need to finish off. So you'll see it's super easy um, to actually make it nice and finished and round. I'm also hitting the lens with a pretty good um, I'm out of heat um, doing, first I did kind of an oxidized flame, and that's just to make sure I burn off any extra fuming that might um, have come off on the lens from when we did the initial fuming. So I'm just hitting that front one more time. You want to make sure that the lens is complete completely melted in and even um, with the color that's wrapping around the back. I'm going to do one last spin here to go ahead and finish off that final round shape. You want to polish off any marks that you got from, uh, from spinning the marble. I'm going to go ahead and tap it off into my other marble mold and this is where I'm going to go ahead and just polish off a little bit um, where we saw the the punty mark and if you do it right there usually isn't much of a punty mark um, if at all so I want to make sure that everything's completely rounded out sometimes when you hit it from the top it will kind of flatten a little bit so I went ahead and just took my uh, hand torch in from the bottom, because this is a, a ring mold that I'm using. I hit it um, from the bottom, that way it kind of droops down and it stays a nice, even, uh, rounded shape on the back. So this is the end look. This is what you guys are going for. Nice, pretty vortex. You can see all the different colors, the blues and the fuming coming through really nicely. That's going to be it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.